Good morning, gentlemen. Again, I am coming to you from the Deanship of the Common Year at Majma University. And again, we are doing our English second language course, the online version. I am your teacher, Dale Warren, and this is lesson number eight for the language school speaking. This is the last lesson in the series because this finishes book four. Please note, we are doing teaching videos for listening, speaking, reading, and writing, but not for conversation classes. So don't worry about conversation classes. It is only listening, speaking, reading, and writing. All right, again, we are using the same textbook that we always use, which is Q Skills for Success, and it is the Book 4 edition, Listening and Speaking. And today, our lesson content is taken from page 172, and the topic is Real Conditional Sentences. And our homework on Real Conditional Sentences will be Exercise A on page 173. And as we normally do, when you have done that exercise, I need you to take a photo of page 173 with your smartphone and send the exercise to your speaking teacher. All right, so the page we are starting with is page 172 and you should all be following with your book open at page 172. Okay, to summarize the grammar, a real conditional construction has two clauses. It has a conditional clause and it has a main clause. Okay, so it is a construction with two different clauses. One that gives a condition and another one which is the main clause. Now, the conditional clause gives the reason for the result in the main clause. Okay, the conditional clause gives the reason that something happens. It gives the reason for some other action to happen. And that other action is the result which we read about in the main clause. The conditional clause starts with a conjunction and our examples here are if, when, whenever, since, as, and there are various other conjunctions that you can use to introduce a conditional clause. All right, 
if you don't remember what a conjunction is, let me just remind you. Conjunctions are joining words like and but words that join two or more other words or two or more other clauses those are conjunctions the conjunctions that we use in conditional clauses however aren't words like and or but the ones that you are used in conditional clauses are usually if when whenever since as sometimes because those are the most common conjunctions in a conditional clause but just to jog your memory a conjunction is a word that joins other words okay the conjunction at the start of the conditional clause tells you that this is a conditional clause and then the other clause has to be the main clause so if we have a condition a real conditional sentence and we have to break it into the two clauses we know that the clause that starts with a conjunction is the conditional clause the other clause is the main clause so please keep that clear in your minds as we go forwards all right now the conditional clause gives the reason for the result in the main clause the main clause gives the result of the action in the conditional clause. Now, another very important point. The main clause can come before the conditional clause or it can come after the conditional clause. And then point seven, the conditional clause and the main clause are usually separated by a comma, but this is not obligatory. You do not have to put the comma. The book is saying you must, but in fact it is not a rule. It is just something that normally happens. Okay, this all seems very long and complicated but it make we make it much easier when we do it in the boxes remember what i said we can make the construction with the conditional clause first and the main clause second so if we do it that way there are three boxes to the construction we start with the conjunction which introduces the conditional clause we go to the conditional clause which is the clause that gives you the reason and then we go to the main clause the clause that gives you the result
So let us look as example number one. As I said, we start with a conjunction, usually if, so I have used if right throughout here. So if we look at our first example, the conjunction we are starting with is that little word, if. Now we have a conditional clause. If Artif dies of Corona, then we have the main clause. Tariq will have to draw up the exam. Tariq drawing up the exam is the result of Artif's dying of Corona. Artif's dying of Corona is the reason that Tariq has to draw up the exam. So remember, the conditional clause giving you the reason, the main clause giving you the result. So just in case you forget that, I'm going to write it here again. The reason Tariq has to draw up the exam is the fact that Artif has died of Corona. The result of Artif's dying of Corona is that Tariq has to draw up the exam. Remember, you must keep that clear in your mind. The conditional clause gives you the reason for the result in the main clause. The main clause gives you the result of the action in the conditional clause. Now, we have a slightly better, happier example. If Artif doesn't die of Corona, Tariq will have a holiday. So again, we start with the conjunction if. We give a conditional clause. If Artif doesn't die of Corona, Tariq will have a holiday. And Tariq will have a holiday is the result. Okay. So if Artif doesn't die of Corona, Artif's survival is the reason for Tariq to have a holiday. Tariq's holiday is the result of Artif's survival. Okay. Example number three. If, again we start with the conjunction, Tariq eats capsa, that is the conditional clause, he will get stronger, the main clause. He will get stronger, that is a result of eating, capsa, the conditional clause. Eating capsa, the conditional clause, gives us the reason that Tariq gets stronger, the result, in the main clause. Now, in this box, we have made the construction with the conditional clause first and with the main clause second. But you do not have to do it that way. You can change the order of the clauses so that the main clause comes first and the conditional clause comes second. So let us see what happens when we switch those examples. Tariq will have to draw up the exam, main clause, if conjunction, out of dies of corona. So instead of saying if out of dies of corona, Tariq will have to draw up the exam, we can also say Tariq will have to draw up the exam if out of dies of corona. We can say, instead of saying, if Artif doesn't die of Corona, Tariq will have a holiday. We can switch the order 
of those clauses and we can say Tariq will have a holiday if Artif doesn't die of Corona. Instead of saying if Tariq eats capsa, he will get stronger, we can switch this around and we can say Tariq will get stronger if he eats capsa. Now, you don't only have to use if. There are other conjunctions, other joining words. Remember, a conjunction is a joining word. Let me just remind you of that again. Like when and wherever that you could also use. So, Torek will have to get, draw up the exam. Wow, it's just not moving. When out of dies of Corona. All right, Torek will have a holiday when out of doesn't die of Corona, or we can say when artists out of. Recovers from Corona. Tariq will have a holiday when Artif recovers from Corona. Tariq will get stronger whenever he eats capsa. Instead of junk food, we can change that conjunction and we can use different conjunctions. We can change the wording of the main or of the conditional clause. The construction is flexible. The conjunction we use most often is if, but it doesn't have to be. You can use other conjunctions. All right, let us have a look again at the book. All right, as they tell us here, real conditionals are used to express many kinds of ideas. There are five things in particular that they express. The first thing is things that will become true. Things that will definitely become true if the condition is met. Okay, so we can say All right, if Saudis don't distance themselves socially, then Corona will spread faster. Okay, that is a definite result. We know that if Saudis don't distance themselves socially, then Corona will spread faster. Okay, so that is one of the first things for which you can use a real conditional clause. It expresses a definite result. Something that will definitely become true if the condition is met. Now, if we had to put this into our boxes, this is one of those where the Conditional clause comes first. Mm -hmm. OK. 
Okay, so, so if we had to break it down, we would say if, and then we give the conditional call, so Udis don't distance themselves socially, then Corona will spread faster. Okay. That is the first purpose for which you can use a real conditional. It expresses a result that will definitely happen if the condition is met. The second thing that a real conditional is used for is a prediction. A prediction is something you think will happen in the future. So, it is not a definite result but it is a result that you think is going to happen if the condition is met. So, so let's give another example. If Saudis do distance socially, the viral curve will flatten. We don't know that for definite, but we think it should happen because it has happened in most other countries. So we think if Saudis do do this properly, then that is what is going to happen. So a prediction is not as strong as a definite result, but it is something we think will happen. Once again, we are putting the conditional clause first, but we don't have to put the conditional clause first, as I said. We could also say, put it second and say the viral curve will flatten if Saudis do distance socially. Okay. If we do it that way, we have put our result clause first, the result will be that the viral clause will flatten and we are putting our reason clause, our conditional clause second. The reason it will flatten is that Saudis are distancing socially. So if we use this box, we are going to put the main clause first, the clause that gives you the result. Remember, it gives you the result, and that gives you the reason for the result, and the result will be the viral curve will 
flatten. Here we have a conjunction if. So all these distance socially. Good. So let us hope that so all these distance socially. Okay. See. C is a habit. Conditionals can be used to express habits. A habit is something you do often or usually. So, we can put the conditional clause first whenever there is an exam I get a headache your main clause is coming second and it's giving you the result and your first clause, your conditional clause is coming first and it is giving you the reason. Okay. So our conjunction is whenever there is an exam, I get a headache. It's telling you that the exam is the reason for me to get a headache and that the headache is the result of the exam. Again, here we are putting our conditional clause first and our conjunction here is whenever. So, we will start with that conjunction. You can rewrite it the other way around, and it is also absolutely correct. You can say, I get a headache whenever there is an exam. And again, getting your headache is the result of the exam, and the exam is the reason that you are getting the headache. The fourth thing for which the conditional clause is very often used is to make a deal, to give somebody a promise, or to compromise on something. Basically, it's used in what we call in English negotiations. So, So, if you give me the money, I will buy the tickets. That's the deal. You give me the money, I will buy the tickets. Or we can say... I will give you the car keys. So, again, we start with a conjunction if. We start with a conditional clause, which gives us 
the reason, and then there is a result clause. Okay. I will give you the car keys. That is the result of your giving me the money. The reason that I will give you the car keys is if you give me, is the fact that you have given me the money. So, our conjunction again is if. A negotiation means we are making a deal. I'm telling you, okay, you have to give me so much money and then I will give you the car keys. So, it is basically a construction that we use in what in English is called negotiations. Negotiations are when you decide somebody is going to do this and in exchange somebody else does something different. Okay. When person A promises to do something in exchange for something else from person B, that is a negotiation. Person A promised to give the car keys as long as person B gave the money. So we can use this construction again for negotiations, deals, compromises, and promises. All right. The last reason we use this negotiation or the last purpose that we use this for is advice. Advice is when you tell someone what he should do. Start with a conditional. When you go to Jidda, and we're using the conjunction when, or if you go to Jidda, we're using the conjunction if, wear your safe mask all the time against the virus. So when or if you go to Jidda, that is your conditional clause. And then if you are going to Jeddah, as a result of going to Jeddah, you must wear your safe mask. So again, we can put this in the first box with the conditional clause first. And we can say, when you go to Jeddah, or we can say if, and our conditional clauses, you go to we then wear your safe mask against the virus. All right. Again, we can switch the order of the clauses and it will still be entirely right. We can say
So we can do it in this order. Wait, I've done it in that order already. Sorry, yes, where you say most. Very simple here. You can put the main clause, the result clause, first, and you can put the reason clause second starting with the conjunction when or if. It doesn't matter which way you say it. You can say when you go to Jidda, wear your safe mask all the time against the virus and that puts the conditional clause first and the main clause second. But you can also say wear your safe mask all the time against the virus when you go to Jidda, and that puts the conditional clause second and the main clause first. They are both correct. What tells you the conditional comes second is the conjunction. When you see the conjunction when or if or since or whenever, that conjunction tells you this is the conditional clause. The main clause is not starting with the conjunction. All right. Homework, page 173, exercise A. So let us have a very quick look at it. Okay. We are going to do number one as an example. So the example is Okay, the conditional clause is coming second. And we know that because the conjunction when is in the middle of the sentence and the conjunction starts the conditional clause. So this conditional clause is coming second here and the The main clause, which gives the result of the action in the conditional, is coming first. So we can continue the game when the rain stops. It is very easy to rewrite that sentence. Let us put it into our box. When quite simple, 
conjunction first, the rest of the conditional, and then the main clause. So, if we have to rewrite it, very simple. We will start by saying start with our conjunction when and then the rest of the conditional sentence and then the main clause which gives the result. We can continue the game. All right. So all they want you to do on page 173, exercise A, is to reverse the order of the clauses. So where they were giving the conditional clause second, they want you to rewrite the sentence. So the conditional clause comes first, and the main clause now comes second. Very easy to do. I need you to complete all the other sentences. And when you have done that, take a photograph with your smartphone and send it as homework to your English teacher. Thank you very much. And I hope that you have learned something from this lesson.